This is the Nebula Capsule. Claims to be the world's most advanced pocket cinema. Let's find out. Before we go too far, and I'm going to try to cover this in any video I do that includes DLP technology, I want to mention this, and this is very important, so if you don't know this, maybe just listen to this part. If you do know about DLP and the rainbow effect, skip it. For most people, the DLP rainbow effect is non-apparent, non-observable to most of us. About the largest percentage of us will never see this problem. There's a smaller percentage of us that can witness what's called rainbow artifacting, and what this is is almost color shifting. When, when an image moves around on a screen, you can almost see the prism trail of red, green, and blue or the different colors that are there around it. Almost like a shadowy effect as it moves. If you've never experienced this, congratulations, you're the larger percent of people that aren't affected by the rainbow effect. The third and most rare percentage of people is going to be the people that can witness the rainbow effect constantly on the screen. DLP technology works by a small chip with a lot of little tiny microscopic mirrors that can only be capable of projecting one color at a time. Some people see this and can see this fast enough that it almost makes them nauseated or sick feeling, and that's a big problem for those people. If you're somebody that sees this rainbow effect and just absolutely put off by DLP projectors, then maybe you want to look at something that's 3 LCD technology or Elcos. Well, that's that's all I really had to say about that. This is a DLP projection projector and I just wanted to make sure you guys are aware. If you've never heard of Nebula, I'm going to tell you a brief bit about who Nebula is. Nebula is a subsidiary company of Anchor. Anchor makes batteries. They're known for things like their batteries. That's what they do. So about last year, maybe a little longer than a year ago, they announced the Nebula Mars, which was a home cinema projection and it was portable. They came out with this on Indiegogo go-go and we decided that we were going to back this thing. When I when I saw how well received and how heralded it was that the Nebula Mars was just really a great projector, just kind of fell short of the market that it really needed to obtain, they came out with this Pico projector. This little Pico projector right here is the Nebula capsule. It's Android 7.1. It has an HDMI output on the back. It uses USB but not USB-C, which was a little bit sad to me, especially with all this newer stuff coming out. USB-C just makes more sense. You can do a little bit more with it. There is a lot that I like about this projector, but I realized as I was going through the review process, most of the fields in which I was looking at things in, I have a lot of criticisms in. So just for the record, I do like this projector a lot, but it might sound like I don't, and I'm just going to illustrate to you the reasons why I had problems with or where I thought its shortcomings were, because it seems like every category it kind of missed with the exception of maybe the actual picture quality itself. But don't, don't let that be too much of anything for you. I'm just here to give you my honest opinions after really looking at it, scrutinizing it, playing with it, showing it on the wall, all that stuff. I'm going to show you as best best I can in detail everything that I can about it. Let's move into it and I'll talk a little bit about it in several different sections here. So this will probably be a long video and in the event that it is a long video, you can go down below if you're interested in things like how did it do in gaming, how did it do in battery life, how did it do with the inputs, how did it do in color test and black crush, we're, we're going to go over that. If this is indeed a long video, which I imagine it will be as I'm just now starting to really record it, you can go down to the links below and you'll be able to find sections where I broke it down for you, hopefully made it simple to find maybe just specifically what you're interested in. So I don't know that I could really tell you that there's a great place to start with this. So we'll just kind of pick a place, start, and move through everything I can from here. Uh, some of the design flaw features that I've, I've noticed with it is uh, it is an IR remote that comes with it. It's not a fancy remote. It's probably a remote you've seen with most cheap or, or lower end things, and that doesn't mean that it is. My biggest problem with this is the fact that the IR receiver for the actual little capsule projector is on the back. So if it's sitting over your shoulder, sitting behind you, and you're trying to point and use it, it's not bouncing back and hitting it, meaning that I have to kind of give it a reach around or I have to stand up and go behind it in order to actually control it. A small thing maybe, but kind of off-putting for me. I didn't like having that as the only IR receiver on the actual projector. One in the front would go the extra mile to make sure that if it's sitting over your shoulder, sitting behind you, you didn't have to go behind it just to use the IR remote. One of the biggest things that this little projector was sold on was sound, and we'll stop here so that you can listen to the sound, and I'll compare it with some other speakers to hopefully give you an idea. Now, it's really hard to listen to recorded sound over a playback device with your own speakers and kind of get an idea, but that's why I'll use other speakers so that you can hopefully get some sort of an idea of what it sounds like.
great omnidirectional sound. It's supposed to be an amazing and impressive speaker for what it is. But realistically, after listening to it, even on speaker mode or just playing video through it, I was not really impressed with it. I was kind of let down by that, I guess, because while the sound shouldn't be the saving grace of the actual product itself, it was really sold on how good it's going to sound compared to other ones. And for the most part, it sounded like a generic projector speaker that you might hear in most projectors. They did a lot of upsell on that too, showing fancy diagrams, and I got really carried away with thinking, oh man, this thing's gonna sound great. If nothing else, I can use it like a Bluetooth speaker too, put it around the house and listen to it. And I was kind of hoping for something better than a Google Mini, but it really just kind of sounds like a Google Mini. Not even that good, maybe. At about 75% is about as high as it'll go. If it starts getting any louder than that, then it just really starts to break. The audio is distorted and it just doesn't sound that great. The little fan inside of it is noisy. It's a small, I assume, blower style fan. I haven't taken it apart or really looked at it that way. But the little fan in it just hisses and whistles and it drives me up the wall. That's something I don't like. So even the fact that you're listening to something or have something going on with it, when that little fan's blowing, it's just a loud hiss sound. Listen. It's almost unforgivably bad because I wouldn't have expected that from such a small 100 lumen. Shouldn't be that much heat going on in there for it to need to cool like that. Doesn't matter whether you're in battery mode or standard mode, the fan is loud regardless. The inputs on the back were a little bit of a kind of a letdown too. If you're not putting it on a tripod, you're kind of stuck with inputs being on the bottom. Down here we have a micro USB and an HDMI. I would have loved to have seen USB-C. Unfortunately, it didn't come with USB-C. One HDMI port, that's cool, that works. I'm glad that that's on there. I think that that's perfect. Would have liked to have seen, again, USB-C. Things you can do with USB-C are things like charging, uh, showing images, uh, putting video through. It has a lot of capabilities if you're using the right stuff under the hood with that USB-C. And on top of that, it's a universal connection. Go up and down, doesn't matter. The downside is, without a tripod, it, it just kind of sits there on the ground and it might kind of lift up the projector. That's not ideal to me. I would have liked to have seen the inputs up a little bit. But if you have a tripod, it'll fit most standard tripods. It uses a small threaded screw that you can put in right here. And they even sell a little tripod that comes with it. But that little tripod might not be big enough for what you want to do, you can put it on like a tripod I'm using here. They list it as an HD standard. Well, it's 480p. That is not really an HD standard by nowadays definitions. To be true HD, it has to be 720p or greater. HD and then full HD is 1080p, then you've got 2K, then you've got 4K or ultra high definition. But 480p, I don't think constitutes or should qualify to be called HD. It's, it's about as low as you get. Overall construction and quality of it is pretty on point. I do like how it feels. It's a great little projector and it feels great. It feels like it's made from real quality material and that's something that's a big bonus too. I didn't feel like it was a cheap little piece of crap I got out of a box. It has a fantastic focus range and it's really easy to use the focus wheel on the side of the projector itself. And within seconds, you can have the image focused. They did a great job with that. I like that a lot. Strangely enough, features that were on this, I didn't anticipate being on this, which kind of surprised me. You can do front and rear projection, but on top of that, you can do front and rear ceiling projection if you wanted to mount something to the ceiling and hang it from the ceiling as well. Pretty cool. I didn't really see that one coming. But Matt, what about gaming latency? Well, gaming latency on DLP technology, DLP technology is probably the way you want to go if you're going to go with gaming on a projector. It is some of the least amount of latency and some of the best gaming response times as far as playing games. What we used here in our test example is actually Mario Kart. And as you can see here, we're able to turn pretty easily in Mario Kart. And you can see that the latency is as minimal as possible. The colors are pretty exceptional. That's where they really got me, where I was really surprised. I turned that on and I started watching different YouTube videos, movies, I started playing all kinds of stuff through it and I remember thinking, whoa, it's pretty incredible. Now, you don't have the ability to change things like your different colors through the RGB spectrum, you don't have things to change, you can't change saturation, you can't change things uh, like brightness, you can change brightness. You can you can put it on battery or standard, but that's it. And the only things you can really do to change color are either warm or cool colors. And they both look exceptionally good, but you don't have the individual control that you might want if you wanted to set certain colors. Certain reds between one and 100, blues between one and 100. You don't have that here on this little projector but the warm and cool color modes, they both look exceptionally good. The colors, the picture, everything was very, very good quality. And I was super surprised by that because I didn't expect it. Another area that it kind of surprised me was the black crush test. So I did a black crush test with this little projector and uh, the most notable black that I could see was five, which was pretty acceptable. And if you're looking hard enough, you can see all the way up to three before you can't see the one and two boxes on this black crush test. It's pretty impressive, especially when it's at about the 70 to 80 inch projection screen size, you can just see it and it's nice. 
I ran it through color testing. Reds look red, blues look blues, it looked great. Where it did struggle though was in the gradients test. As I ran it through a gradients test, which is basically puts up an image that goes from white to black or white to blue, you're looking for the break lines in the gradients test. And whether they're done in slashes or direct lines or horizontal lines, it doesn't matter. The projector was able to identify the lines and I could see that. That's not something you want. You want it to look like one clean shade from white to black. You don't want to see the brake lines as it's going through the grays all the way to get there. So it did fail that, but everything else was on point and looked great. Navigating the menu is pretty much child's play. It's pretty simple to get through. Everything is in tiles and nice blocks, so you can figure out what you're looking for pretty quickly, pretty simply. Setting it to Bluetooth is very simple. Projector controls are a little bit on the limited kind of... Uh lower side I guess but it does have options in there like your normal cool warm things like that you can change uh, battery mode you can do simple things like that as well as check for small things like updates you can do auto or manual keystone corrections in there and it's all pretty intuitive and straightforward I don't feel like there should be a need to really dive into too much of that we will take a look at the app that they do offer with it so that you can control it from the app that might be one of the neater features that comes with it all right so in front of me I've just got it pointing down at the table so that we can see and make sure some of this works through some of this testing what we're gonna do is take a look at the capsules app App, one of the things that should make using it more advanced. Once we've downloaded the app, we're gonna go try to connect to the nebula now. It sees our nebula. That was easy. Okay, it's got, got some kind of help screen up right here. Oh, it's gesture controlled. That makes more sense. So there we go. We figured that out. It's gesture controlled. Let's see if we can search with it. It didn't give me a keyboard. Let's see what this is. Maybe this is a keyboard. Oh, it is! It's the keyboard, so we can just type on it. Oh, that's perfect. That makes it so much simpler. Pretty simple. Makes it a lot more easier to use than trying to use that remote, but can we do things like power it off? We sure can. I wonder if we can power it back on after we power it off. Oops, I'm still on mouse mode. Let's find out if we can turn it back on, because that's a big thing, too. The regular remote seems to not be very good. No, it just gives me a reconnecting thing, because now that the nebula's off, it can't see the nebula. That's pretty neat. So that's a pretty neat and pretty handy app. I definitely recommend trying the app out. I haven't actually done it until just now, so as, as you can probably tell. All right, let's move on and look at some other things. You do have the ability to connect to AirPlay if you have iOS device or Meerkast if you have an Android device. This is something that's pretty cool and it worked like a charm. It was pretty awesome to be able to just go onto my phone and display some stuff up there. We do have a little bit of a screen door effect on it, but that's to be expected with most projectors, to be honest with you. It can take this thing a long time to charge, and it'll go through a charging phase doing this. When it's charging, it'll be red, fully charged, it's green. Guys, if I missed anything you were interested in or you cared about and you really wanted to know about this and I totally skipped it, then just post down below. I'll be sure to try to get to it and answer your question as quickly as I can. I hope that this was helpful to somebody. Be sure and like it if you like it, dislike it if you didn't like it. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions. Uh, be sure and follow me on Twitter at 86media, and I'll see you guys in the next video that I do. I'll leave you here at the end of this video with just some shots, comparisons, and some demos of the actual projector itself so that you can see it for yourself at least as best as I could do to present it to you. Anyways, I hope it was helpful to somebody and I'll see you guys in the next video I do.